So I just received a comment on my most popular typing video about the fact that I said I prefer membrane or chiclet keyboards. Last week, I happened to receive a mechanical keyboard. Do I still prefer membrane and chiclet? What do I think about mechanical keyboards? That's what we're gonna get into today. Hello internet, my name is Mark. I can type around an average of 165 words per minute. And today we're gonna be talking about a mechanical keyboard that I've been sent. I wanna thank Banggood for sending me this keyboard to review. They don't have any say in the creation of this video. I'm not being compensated in any way. They've sent me a keyboard, said provide an honest review. It can be positive negative, neutral. If you want to find out what my conclusion and overall thoughts are, you can go to the conclusion at the end of this video. All the timestamps are in the description below and on the video bar. And that being said, this is my first product review in general. So I will be doing it in my own type of style. And if you find yourself interested in the keyboard, you can find the corresponding links in the description down below. Seeing as it's my first product review, any and all criticism is of course accepted in the comments below. But without further ado, Let's jump into it. So unboxing the keyboard, the box that the keyboard arrives in is really straightforward. The manual it comes with is kind of useless because it says things in terms of arrow keys, of which there are none, and more on that in a minute. I went to plug in the USB-C cable that it came with, but quickly realized that the cable is actually bigger than the slot in the keyboard, which is on the back of the keyboard. So I had to carefully carve off part of it so that it fit. Be smart, like I could have been, and use another USB-C cable that you can find anywhere. You know, I figured what's life without a little spice. Please don't try this at home. Little darker, but that's so you can see the lighting a bit better. This keyboard is a 60% keyboard, which means it only has 60% of the keys a full keyboard might have. No arrow keys, no function keys, no tilde, no delete, no print screen, stuff like that. For those of you who are smarter than I am and know what this means, there are yellow Gateron switches. I just know that they make a nice mechanical clicking sound. They're not too loud or anything. The sound is really easy to get used to. And you know, I can type fast with it. I haven't found any hindrance to my typing speed, but we'll get to some typing tests in just a minute. All in all, the keyboard's actually really physically bulky. I sort of did expect it to have like a plastic body in a sense but but whatever it is it's really sturdy it is it, it is a, it is solid and it's got little rubber feet on the bottom it's much more elevated on the desk than a membrane keyboard might be but that's also pretty easy to get used to for those interested this is a hot swappable keyboard so you can swap out both the keycaps and the switches it does not come with a tool to do that though so keep that in mind now as for the rgb aspect I, i've really enjoyed it i think that the company has software but you really don't need it you hit fn and then control to change the lighting pattern on the keyboard and if you use the left control you can actually change the surrounding border light so to speak now when i first uh, uh, started messing around with the colors. If you hit FN and then space, you can ch press a key to change the color of the keyboard. Now, what I didn't realize is that each letter actually lights up to what color it changes the keyboard to. And I only learned this like three days after having it because I looked at it and I thought, wait a minute, there's one red, one orange, like three or four yellow, a couple of green and a lot of blues and purples. Personally, my favorite are the, the white or gray lights just because they're nice and subtle. And then my favorite lighting setting is the one where if you press a key, it, it sends out a pulse. If you hold on function and press the quote, the lighting changes. So now there's no lighting at all. Do the same thing and the brightness increases. And yeah, that's kind of it. There are a bunch of different lighting modes and they're really fun to play around with. Change the mood to red or green and whatnot. So the main critiques and criticism that I've had about this keyboard is the fact that it's a 60% keyboard. As a part of my everyday workflow, I use the arrow keys a lot and I use print screen a lot. And I actually use the back tick and the tilde keys quite often because of markdown formatting. For the arrow keys, for example, you hold down function and use WASD. I've had this keyboard for just under a week now and I've gotten used to it, which is good. And so, you know, using arrow arrow keys feels natural now, but this is not the kind of keyboard I would actively seek out simply because it doesn't have arrow keys. And you know, it's kind of annoying to remember, you know, function P is print screen or function right bracket is delete. And you know, if I get another mechanical keyboard at some point, cause I can see myself continuing to use this, this would be like my travel keyboard. It's nice, small and compact because laptops don't have numpads default. I already have this Bluetooth numpad extension because things like blender rely on it heavily. So you can always get one of those to kind of go with the keyboard, a peripheral for the peripheral, if you will. So that being said, with the whole function thing, I do wish there was little prints on the front of the keys that kind of told you what the function did. Some of them are intuitive. FNP is print screen. FN escape is intuitive because that's where the tilde or back tick would be anyway. So some quick things to compare a mechanical keyboard to a chiclet keyboard. Ignoring the size here, of course, and the fact that I am missing the, <laughs> the backslash. Getting close to the mic. This is what the keys sound like on this one. I, I hear sound tests on a lot of keyboard review videos, so. I mean, it's a mechanical keyboard. It sounds like a mechanical keyboard and it's kind of a nice sound. It's not too loud. 
Another thing is the wrist placement, because this is so high off the table, which can be very nice. I find that my wrists are tilted much more up than with the membrane keyboard or chiclet keyboard. I'm using those terms interchangeably. Lastly, again, the size. The keys are pretty much the same size when it comes to like how much surface area they take up. I haven't noticed anything during typing tests in terms of travel time from getting from one key to the next. It did take a second because it's a new keyboard, of course, but otherwise it's not like my typing speeds were suddenly hindered. In fact, they maybe were improved. Speaking of typing tests, let's get a change of scene and hop over to comparing the chiclet keyboard with the Gamma K K61 mechanical keyboard. All right, so a bit of a change of scene. This is monkeytype.com. This is my streaming layout. You can join me sometimes when I stream my typing practice at twitch.tv slash bitekangaroo. Link in the description down below. We're gonna do two quick 30 second tests, one on the Gamma K 60% keyboard and then one with the membrane chiclet keyboard. So OBS is lagging a little bit and I also haven't practiced or anything, but these are my quick stats for the Gamma K 60% and sliding the membrane chiclet keyboard into view. Just keep in mind, I've been using the Gamma K for about a week now to, oh, I should have done a repeat test, but this immediately feels very wrong. So much faster on this one, but I think lower accuracy. Whoa, I hit 236 on one of them. <laughs> that was probably like A. So I, I think that really just reinforces my point that no matter if you're using a mechanical or you're using a membrane keyboard, it's really up to personal preference. I will say, going from this to this, there really wasn't a hindrance on my typing as I always thought there would be. Plus, typing on this keyboard, it feels really great and I love the clickiness of it. It was really easy to get used to. The spacing really isn't that different even though I thought it would be. You really don't notice depressing the keys that much. I mean, I just switched back between the two real quick. So yeah, that's the difference I can show you for my own typing tests. And what I've gotten is that on a really positive note, this doesn't hinder my typing at all. And on an even better note, whatever you practice with is what you'll be best with. So I'm a big proponent that your equipment doesn't matter. So even if this is, you know, a 60% keyboard, I can still get near or around the same speeds as I'm getting with this other chiclet keyboard I've had for like a year now. That all being said, this keyboard is great for just general typing tests. You never need the arrow keys. You never need the delete key or anything like that. You just need backspace and you're good to go. The keys are all in the same place otherwise. So the 60% here when it comes to typing tests changes next to nothing. As going from chiclet to mechanic, or even mechanical to chiclet, everything just feels natural to carry over. So we started off with a small generic review of the Gamma K 60% keyboard. And then I sort of compared it with the membrane or chiclet keyboard. Then we did some typing tests to compare it where it came in there because that's what's most important to me. And I believe a large portion of my audience. Now I wanna give you guys the overall conclusion and review that I've had from the experience of using this keyboard over the past four or five days. I've nothing gotten used to it. I've never really had any quote unquote gamer technology. When it comes to lighting on the keyboard, I didn't think I was gonna like it that much because I'm not too much of a flashy person, but it's actually been super fun to mess around with the different settings on the keyboard. And I'll just be like, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm feeling pretty orange today. Or you know what? Hey, I'm feeling pretty blue today. And it's just fun to see it, especially when it's kind of dark in the room. Usually I'm someone who wishes there was software for his peripherals, but at the same time, it's just fun to mess around and change the colors through the keyboard directly. Now I've never used a mechanical keyboard for more than five minutes, and I've certainly never used a 60% keyboard. In terms of this keyboard being a 60% keyboard, if you're someone who doesn't really use the arrow keys heavily or doesn't use the numpad heavily, I would definitely say go for it because it's a nice way to kind of remove everything you don't need and having the more compact keyboard is certainly nice. However, as someone who relies a lot on arrow keys and things like the numpad for Blender, I would probably not go out of my way to get a 60% keyboard. However, I think the 60% keyboard is pretty great for anyone looking for just a generally more compact, smaller keyboard. If you don't use the arrow keys that often, using function and WASD is super easy to get used to. My workflow from now on is probably going to be using this keyboard and then if I'm jumping into Blender or something, I'm going to pull out the membrane chiclet keyboard. The mechanical keyboard is kind of high up on the desk, but I got used to that really, really quick. And it probably helps my posture in the long run. Again, the build is really solid and sturdy, so I could 100% see this as like a travel keyboard. I've always considered mechanical keyboards to be sort of flimsy and just made of plastic, but I can totally see myself just throwing this in my backpack with the cable and, you know, being on my way. It's compact, it's slim, it feels great that way. And really the biggest qualm that I have with it is the fact that it doesn't have more keys, but that's just a problem with 60% keyboards. Otherwise, if you're looking for a small compact keyboard, this one would be fantastic. All in all, from my limited knowledge about mechanical keyboards, this keyboard doesn't blow me out of the water, but it also doesn't disappoint me. So it's a pretty neutral review. If I was looking for a slim compact keyboard, which has been very
very nice because the shorter width is really nice for my desk and everything looking nice and being compact. This would definitely be a go-to. I'll definitely keep using it because it feels more official to use the mechanical keyboard and it's just more fun in general with the lighting and all. Plus it doesn't hurt my typing speed and part of me thinks I've been sleeping on mechanical keyboards. So thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in giving this keyboard a shot, definitely check the description down below as well as the top comment. They are affiliate links. So thanks again to Banggood for sending me this keyboard for review. I just released a video announcing my devlog that's coming out and that's involving you, the viewer and all the community. So thank you everybody so much for your support, especially on the typing videos. I've got a few more typing videos and productivity videos coming at you. But until then, thanks yet again for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.